Hello and welcome back to Cooking with Tara. Today we're doing a very special meal. It's for a friend, Molly Bloom. She said last time I did this kind of a meal, she asked for the recipe. As it turns out, Molly, the, the chicken that we did in that last recipe, my sous chef was not too enthusiastic about. So I'm changing it up a bit. We're doing chicken breast. I've sliced it in nice big chunks and I've marinated it in a sauce that is called char shu sauce, and I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. I've got a friend, David Muller, who will tell me whether I'm pronouncing it correctly or not, because he speaks Chinese. So it's C-H-A-R-S-I-U sauce. It's Chinese barbecue sauce, and it's been marinating in that. And what I'm going to do is grill this chicken so that we get some nice grill marks on it and it cooks through. And I'm going to glaze it with a little bit more of the char shu sauce. And then I'm going to sprinkle some sesame seeds on it. So it'll be a barbecued chicken with sesame seeds. And to go with that, I looked at all of the vegetables in the Asian market. And when I was looking at them, one of my all time favorites is baby bok choy. And this is just such a gorgeous vegetable that I had to get it. And I can't pass up, whoops, I can't pass up the uh, basil and when I asked the proprietor for Thai basil, he said, no, I'm sorry, we don't have that, but we do have Vietnamese basil. This is also known as temple basil. It has a different flavor from the Italian sweet basil. It, it almost has a little bit of a licorice taste to it. it. It's really a beautiful basil and it adds a very unique flavor. So I'm not going from any particular Asian cuisine here. We're using Chinese items. We're gonna use some Vietnamese and so it's kind of pan-Asian. I'm just taking an Asian influence here as opposed to following any particular Asian cuisine. Of course, we've got ginger. I got this beautiful knob of ginger and plenty of garlic. We like a lot of garlic in things that we do. The um, mushrooms were just too beautiful to pass off. So we have shiitake mushrooms. I'm going to include those. Bean sprouts, of course, are wonderful. We're going to serve this over noodles, and the noodles are tapioca flakes. So these are actually gluten-free for those of you who are gluten-sensitive. This is a noodle you can work with. Some of the unique flavors that I'm going to incorporate into the stir-fry are some chili crisp, uh, some se pure sesame oil, some fish sauce, and to thicken everything up and make a sauce, I'm going to be using some chicken stock and cornstarch. So rather than bore you with all of the details of uh, chopping and preparing, because true, most of the time spent in preparing an Asian meal is spent on the cutting board. So this is a time when you really wanna have your knife skills down uh, because once all of the ingredients are prepared, the actual cooking time is very, very brief. So I'll prepare all of this stuff. When you come back, I'll be mise en place, ready to pull the trigger on this meal. Okay, so I've done all of the prep that I need to do before we start cooking, with one exception. These uh, tapioca noodles, one of the problems that you can have with these is they can turn into a ball of glue in a matter of seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pour some hot water over these, and as soon as they've softened just a little bit, I'm going to plunge them into cold water and then I'm gonna work them into the stir fry towards the end. This is probably the trickiest part of this whole meal, and I wouldn't blame you if instead you went with some boiled rice, okay? Please, this, this could be a nightmare if it turns into a ball of glue. <clears throat> what ingredient I failed to mention were sesame seeds. I'm using black sesame seeds in this dish only because they're pretty. They taste just the same as white ones. Uh, I do recommend you buy your sesame seeds at an Asian grocery. They are a fraction of the cost of the sesame seeds at a grocery store. Also, you want to keep seeds and nuts in your freezer. They'll keep practically forever in the freezer, but they can go rancid if they're kept in the cupboard. Okay, so what I've done now is I've washed the, uh, the bean sprouts. I'll drain those right before I cook them. I've stemmed, washed, and chopped the shiitake mushrooms. I've taken the green onions and I've done two different things with them. The white-ish part, you can see there's some green in there. I'm going to cook in the stir fry. The perfectly green part, I'm gonna use as a garnish on top. Gives it two different flavors, both are delicious. I've chopped 
probably four or five cloves of garlic. We, again, we like a lot of garlic. I took about a thumb sized piece of that ginger and chopped it up fine. I've taken a tablespoon of cornstarch and I mixed it with chicken stock. And this, this slurry will start the thickening process. The nice thing is I'll be able to add as much additional chicken stock until I get just the consistency I want. The Thai basil, holy basil, temple basil, Vietnamese basil, whatever basil you want to call it. Remember, it's got a purple stem and a green leaf and a distinctly different flavor from Italian uh, sweet basil. But on, in a pinch, what I've done on occasion is, whoop, let me turn this off. I blended the sweet basil with mint, and that actually is a very effective substitute if you can't get temple basil. <clears throat> okay, I think we've got all of the ingredients together. I'm going to pour a little hot water over these noodles. When they soften just a little bit, I'm going to rinse them and plunge them into cold water. The next thing I'm going to do is to cook this chicken. And I'm going to set up an electric uh, grill and, and uh, sear it, uh, actually just brown it on both sides, grill it on both sides. Add a little bit of uh, the additional char siu sauce and some sesame seeds to it. And then that'll be done and I'll keep that warm and we'll come back for the stir fry after that. So next step up, I'm going to grill the chicken. Okay, so we've, uh, during the break, <laughs> I've chopped up the bok choy and rinsed it in the salad spinner. I also have quite a bit of that uh, Thai basil in there. Uh, what I'm going to do is cook a lot of it in with the bok choy in the stir fry. And then this little bit that I have left is to finish on top. It, again, it gives us two different flavors. There's one flavor that you get from cooking the onions, and there's another flavor you get from putting the fresh onions on top. There's one flavor that you get from cooking the basil, another from putting the fresh basil on top. I've also changed my mind about the black sesame seeds because they're going on the chicken. And I think the uh, char siu sauce is going to be dark in color. I think a little bit lighter uh, sesame seed would be better. So these are straight out of the freezer. All right, so I'm going to grill the chicken. Now you can do this on a charcoal grill. You can do it on a gas grill. You can do it uh, on a grill pan. I suppose you could do it in a frying pan. I'm doing it on an electric grill that is Teflon coated. It doesn't get nearly as hot as some other grills, but one of the advantages to that is that the char siu sauce has sugar in it. And I've just oiled this and the sugar on some grills would burn. On this grill, it will just caramelize. And so for this particular purpose, I prefer something with a little less heat. On a gas grill or a charcoal grill, you might want to use indirect heat. And for our family and friends with Traeger grills, the smoke would actually be kind of nice. So if you have a Traeger and you want to use uh, wood pellets and give it a little smoke in the process, that would all be for the good. By the way, if anybody knows where I can get another pair of these tongs, please tell me. I've worn out several sets. I like the fact that they have the equivalent of kind of a spatula on each end. They work great for purposes like this. So you can see this didn't take very long. These strips of chicken, these are slices that I took out of the breast. By the way, a little pro tip on that. If you slice the chicken while it's still just partially frozen, still has ice crystals in it, it slices way easier. Okay, so once this gets grilled on the other side, what I'm going to do is put it in a pan and I'm going to have it ready to pop into the air fryer. I'm going to brush the tops with a little bit more of the sauce, sprinkle the uh, sesame seeds on, and I'm going to finish it very quickly in the air fryer 
just to put a little tan on the sesame seeds and to get that extra layer of the barbecue sauce to uh, uh, caramelize a little bit on top. All right, so I, I don't know what this was, a couple of minutes at most, but that meat is just about done. The additional time in the air fryer will very easily finish it up. So I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to switch to a wok here so I can start the stir fry. So we'll pause right there and I'll come back to him ready with the wok. The induction burner makes a little noise, so I hope that's not too distracting. But what I've done is I've taken the chicken that we did on the grill, brushed a little bit more of the char siu sauce on it, sprinkled uh, the raw sesame seeds over the top, and that's going to go into the air fryer for just a couple of minutes until we uh, get a little tan on the uh, sesame seeds and get that sauce bubbling up. But we're going to wait a little bit on that as I do the stir fry. So for the stir fry, I'm heating the wok and then into the wok, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of peanut oil and then get our ginger and garlic going. And don't want that to go too long. I'm going to get just a little bit of color on it, not burn it. That causes it to get bitter if you let it burn. Uh, the next thing in will be the mushrooms. And then I've got the uh, bok choy. Now when I cut the bok choy, I cut the stem ends small, but I leave the leaves large. I like the way that looks and it cooks perfectly that way. So we'll add that in just a couple of seconds. Get the mushrooms started here. The wok cooking is normally done at a very high temperature. This is coming up to temp, but we're doing this little tabletop induction burner, so there's a limit to what you can get. I'm going to add a little bit of sesame oil to this. Help bring it along. By the way, those tapioca noodles, we poured boiling water over them until they became al dente and then douse them in ice water. So that's, they're nice and separate right now. And as long as I have enough veg in the uh, wok when I put these in there, they should uh, separate out. But as I warned you, this is a noodle that can turn into a glue ball on you. All right, we're getting some nice stir frying going there now. I'm gonna add the bok choy and the basil. And I did manage to drop a spoon, which I'll have to replace. As I said, we're going kind of pan-Asian here, as opposed to any particular Asian cuisine. Uh, so you could use soy sauce at this point. I'm rather fond of fish, fish sauce, so I'm going to use some fish sauce. But the first thing is going in are these sprouts. And again, I'm not going to use all of these right now. I'm going to save some for the end. I like the crunch of a raw sprout, but I also, again, like the sprout cooked in. So the combination of the two textures, two flavors, because they do become different. I give it a little splash of the fish sauce. That's going to add some saltiness and some umami. That elusive kind of funky, wonderful flavor. And next, the noodles.
The nice thing about the veg is they'll keep those noodles separated a bit as they continue to cook. Oop, I got the whole bottom of that in there. I am like a kid in a candy store with this chili crisp stuff. I've been adding it to everything. I just love the flavor. It is not hot. It looks like it ought to be fiery hot, but it is not. It's just delicious. And again, it adds another dimension to the flavor. I bought two big jars of it yesterday. I hope it's as good as that brand. I couldn't find the same brand. All right, now I'm going to add the white part of the scallion. Now we're going to keep cooking this until I think the noodles are tender enough. That's really the only thing we need to worry about now is get these just the right texture there. A little bit chewy yet. Mm. And they have the chicken stock and cornstarch in there. Right, now as that chicken stock and cornstarch is thickening up, now I can judge the thickness that I want. I'm just looking for a kind of a light sauce. That cornstarch will thicken up quite a lot of liquid. I used about a tablespoon of cornstarch. Alright, so we got the effect of the noodles and the effect of the cornstarch. It's pulling everything together right now. Do not want to let these noodles get all stuck together. Okay, I'm going to turn this off and let it rest for a little bit and let those noodles soften a little bit more while I finish off the chicken. All right, so the chicken's in the air fryer at 400, and we'll just get a little color on that, toast the sesame seeds off, and then we are going to be ready to plate this up. I think a nice serving platter would be good for this. Okay, so we've only been gone about five minutes, but the uh, chicken has taken on a beautiful caramelization. The sesame seeds have toasted and they're really into the sauce. That sauce actually bubbled up quite a lot when it was in the air fryer. And I've got the noodles down, uh, I mean the uh, stir fried down. Uh, I put some, uh, some of the raw uh, sprouts on top and some, some of the uh, uncooked basil. And now I'm just putting some scallions over the top of that. A few more pieces of the basil. Now, when I serve mine, I'm going to add a little bit more chili crisp. I just can't get enough of this stuff. So I'm going to add some more of that. I also like a little bit more saltiness, so I'm going to add a little bit of soy sauce. But this is a beautiful dinner. I hope you enjoy it. Molly, if you make it, uh, I hope it turns out well for you. 
I would suggest first time out, use the rice instead of the uh, tapioca noodles. Those are pretty tricky to work with. And we send our love to you and Doug. So if you like this, please hit subscribe on YouTube. Let your friends know. I really want more people to start cooking at home, making some wonderful stuff. And I'd love to share this with you. Until the next time.